Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics and this is the Walther PDP. I can't remember a time in recent memory where I've had so many people ask me to review a gun as the Walther PDP. And I think that's because Walther threw everything, including the kitchen sink, at marketing for this gun. And they sent a lot of them out there to uh, brand influencers and also uh, professional shooters and subject matter experts to really get a push out there, which is how capitalism works. So I can't be mad at them for that. But I wanted to check one out, so I jumped on GunBroker and I managed to find the one that I was looking for, which was the full-size four inch. They also make a compact model and a longer and a longer and probably an even longer knowing Walther, uh, eventually those guns just kind of get a little bit ridiculously long. Uh, but uh, Walther has been known for quite some time uh, as well, primarily a handgun maker, although they have made submachine guns and, and uh, some other unobtainium firearms in the past. Uh, over the past couple of years, I'd say a couple decades now, they've been really really hard on on or really really big on producing handguns and the pdp is the latest generation of that now this is an optics ready gun and initially to my eye it's the first gun where walter was like let's really try to build this gun around the optic and the question becomes were they successful now getting right into it you are getting a traditional polymer frame steel slide nine millimeter 18 round capacity firearm that has a very very generous optic pocket for the mounting of various optics and it uses glock profile sights glock rear dovetail glock front uh, for the review process i just left the standard plastic sights on there i wasn't really worried about putting suppressor height sights on it uh, mainly because it sits so deep that I can still get the top, I'd say, two millimeters of my iron sights through the sight pitcher using this Hollow Sun 508T that I didn't really feel like I needed to take these sights off and add suppressor height sights. Um, if you want to, that's something that you can do, but just know that using Glock sights is a lot easier than Walther producing yet another generation or profile or footprint of sights that you have to then seek out and have hopefully third-party manufacturers are making sights for it. So that wasn't an issue I was going to have. Uh, you've got your ambi controls, um, reversible magazine release, ambi slide release. I've always liked Walther's slide releases because being a primarily left-handed shooter, I release with my index finger on my reload. So bang, stuff, new mag hit it like that and uh, it's very generous you really have to be trying to miss that thing when I shoot it right-handed it's nice and big for thumb operation as well because my thumbs are not short but they're not long for my general hand size so I've always appreciated the larger uh, larger slide release slash slide stop uh, manipulations and then of course you have Walther's trigger which I definitely will spend some time talking about now I changed my review process some months ago. I used to mount a optic if it was gonna be an optic review or pick up the gun and very first thing I would do the burn down. And I still do that with some stuff like suppressors, uh, but with anything that's going to be experiencing the manipulation and the drop testing, uh, I went with a 508T because I know it's a very durable optic for the purposes of the review of the PDP because I knew if I was gonna be dropping it and I'm gonna be dropping it, um, the, the 508 is gonna be able to handle it. I'm not gonna to have to worry about the optic breaking and be like, oh, I wonder if the mounting system is broken too. So I knew this thing is going to be able to take the the abuse of gravity's constant uh, during the review process. So I got that mounted, but I didn't start my drop testing in, initially. I got my first 500 rounds in before I did my first drop test. And that's generally where I do the burn down, which is 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if that accelerated rate of fire would identify issues that you wouldn't see with the same round count over a much longer time. So here's your burn down is what I would have said if I could get magazines for this thing. 
I did not want to wait a ridiculous amount of time to be able to collect enough magazines to load 500 rounds at one time. So I literally, it came with two 18 round magazines and I discovered while Googling around the internet that the Canic, t the Canic magazines would also feed in this thing. They just would occasionally not lock the slide back. So I bought as many Canic magazines as I could. But I think that secret was out for the PDP buyer. So I couldn't find many of those either. So I ended up with seven magazines. So there was no burn down, but I still did my standard 2000 round review process. One of the biggest concerns that I heard people ask about, and one of the things that I was definitely gonna be, or I should say one of the things I noticed when I got the gun in, was the shoe, the actual optic uh, footprint. It doesn't have any kind of recoil boss interfaces like you see from other guns. It's literally just a kind of flat space for you to add a adapter plate. The adapter plate, is, the one I use for the review, even though there's already third party plates out there like CNH Precision makes some, I went with Walther's plate. Uh, when you get the gun in, there's a little thing you can get online. You put in your information for the gun that you bought, and they'll send you the plate. They'll send you a plate specific for what you purchased, which is a little aggravating because I kind of want to buy the gun and have the plates in there. But I think Walther's probably saving a ridiculous amount of money by doing it that way. Because I know when I buy, like for instance, a Glock MOS, if I was going to use MOS plates, which I usually just go right in the trash. Uh, it comes with a bunch of different plates, but that's a bunch of wasted money on Glock's part because probably you only need one of those plates. So from Walther's point of view, smart move. From my point of view, a little aggravating because I had the gun, but I couldn't really use it until I got that plate in. Good news, it only took about a week and a half for it to show up in the mail. I went with the RMR uh, centric plate. It does appear to be metal injection molded or cast, uh, but it is a ferrous metal, so it's steel-ish, um, something like that. I went ahead and mounted the 508T and started the review process. Zeroing was actually really straightforward, as deep as it sits. Uh, I was able to put it on paper pretty quickly um, and start working it through the review process. One of the initial things that uh, Walter talks about is the ergonomics of the gun is supposed to allow you to acquire the dot a little bit easier, changing the grip angle to make the gun more presentable. Problem for me is I'm already really proficient with acquiring red dots on handguns, and I didn't really have a learning curve transferring over from the guns that I usually shoot to the Walther, and this is the first Walther I've owned in quite a long time. And the last Walther was a P99 I owned many, many years ago. Uh, grip angle is similar, but not the same. Um, that feature is not something I really got to appreciate because I spend so much time shooting red dot handguns. The trigger, the performance duty trigger, which I think is um, an homage, if you will, an improvement or a reallocation or repurposing of the trigger from the Q5 match. It's a very similar trigger, in, at least in radius and the way that it feels to me. It is quoted as five, five and a half. I've seen it quoted as between five and six, uh, as far as poundage on the pull. What you'll notice with this trigger is it has a trigger safety that's um, there, but it doesn't fight you a lot. So as soon as I add pressure to the trigger and I'm going for my first shot, that trigger safety falls into the trigger so well I don't even notice it's there. It's not like some other guns where I can always feel that trigger safety as I press so it kind of deceits or makes my finger placement on the trigger a little bit precarious depending on where I'm putting it for what I'm doing. Uh, I don't feel a lot of resistance through the pull. It's a very clean break. The gun cycles. You do have to come out somewhat far for the wall if you're someone who's into pinning the trigger. That's something you're definitely going to notice. Um, one thing I notice about it is I don't really feel the weight of the trigger, even though when I put it on the trigger meter, uh, this trigger was breaking just over five pounds consistently. Press, 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 press. Uh, but I don't feel that five pounds, which is really strange for me because generally curved triggers, I notice that trigger press a lot more. What can I say about the trigger? I like it. I do like this trigger a lot. I don't necessarily think it's going to be the best trigger for someone who's new to red dot handguns because uh, you're spending a lot of time consciously focused on your dot behavior. You're not thinking much about your trigger press. It might be something that you're going to get frustrated with. And I'm not saying the gun goes off when you don't want it to go off, but I'm saying that it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve if you're joining the two systems together coming over from some other trigger system because there's a lot of dead air between the pull and the brake, uh, relatively speaking. But I do like this trigger a lot. And as far as a out of the box trigger, I think it's excellent. Of course, the elephant in the room is, did Walther screw up by designing their optic shoe in, or their optic footprint, their shoe in that way? Uh, you'll notice with the 508T mounted, I don't have a front fence. 
uh, that's going to be, they had to make the, the, the shoe long enough to accommodate the popular optics that are out there. So some optics are going to sit in there. And you'll notice in the rear, I have a gap as well. This is concerning for people, especially a lot of engineers or hobbyist engineers, when they started looking at this thing, without those recoil bosses for the plate, the optic is going to be mounted to the plate and the plate mounted to the gun but there's an ability for a lot of stress to be loaded on two screws and two, relatively speaking, thin screws considering how many Gs are loaded into the gun when you shoot it. I'm also gonna be doing those one-handed manipulations, which is something we teach people when they shoot one-handed. If you've got to cycle the slide, you can cycle it off uh, your gear or, or another object. So during the 2000 round review, I did a lot of those one-handed manipulations, seeing if that would knock it out of zero. And then of course, every 500 rounds, I'm going to do the drop test, which is where a lot of people thought, okay, that's where the gun is gonna fail. Here's a five round group I fired just after zeroing the gun. So this is a five round confirmation group shot at 25 yards. Then we got into the 2000 round review process, drop testing the gun every 500 rounds. And between those drop tests, I did a lot of one hand manipulations and just shooting the gun. Used 115, 124, 124 plus P and some 147 just for good measure. So the big moment of truth, this is just 2000 rounds. So it is a small sample size over the potential lifetime of the gun. But here is a final group fired after the, la after the last drop test uh, at 2,000 rounds. Same distance. For me, the gun maintains zero, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So uh, my initial apprehensions over the shoe not having what I'm used to from other guns um, kind of put to bed a little bit and of course the disclaimer is if your gun takes a hard hit or if you do happen to drop it which is a little bit less likely but still possible you should definitely check the zero before you put your life in that gun's hands but 2,000 rounds four drop tests a lot of one-handed manipulations a lot of different types of ammunition just the general use and abuse that I'm going to put the gun through the, through during the review process uh, I didn't lose my zero which was kind of the goal like make sure that the gun can handle a little bit more in a review so you don't have to do it uh, I do enjoy, I did enjoy really, I really did enjoy shooting this gun. The only real complaint that I have um, is the magazine release. And this is probably because being a left-handed shooter, I use my index finger. Even though I can reverse it, I found that using my index finger to hit that magazine release is going to be faster than using my thumb. It has this... Uh, guard if you will a magazine release guard on the bottom which kind of makes me remember like magazine releases on hks which is pressing down versus pressing in i don't like that being there and it's probably something i'm going to take down with a dremel if i'm going to keep this gun uh it's not a big deal i can still index and hit that release but i don't like that being there and i don't really understand why it is i'm sure that it's there to help protect the magazine release when carrying concealed. And I shot this thing from concealed carry holsters and duty holsters. It did fit in some of my Sfarlins, although I don't know right now um, a specific Sfarlin holster offered for the PDP. But if you get on the internet and look around, you can probably find a Sfarlin that definitely fits. It fit in a couple of mine. My Glock ones, it fit. Um, kind of. Uh, mainly, I shot it from a uh, Filster Floodlight. Uh, I don't like that. That's not something I really care for. But again, it's something I can fix myself, so it's not a big deal. I own a Dremel. Uh, I know how to use it, um, and I'm not really worried about uh, you know making a small cosmetic change, well, functional change, uh, to the frame of the gun to this, to to be able to not have that be there. Trigger's great. The gun is accurate. Out of the box, it's really good. Um, I would have. I kind of wish they would have went with a target crown barrel versus what they did end up going with. Uh, but that's not that big of a deal. It's just something really nitpicky, kind of spoiled by other guns out there that have those target crown barrels. Uh, and it's something I'm sure the aftermarket is going to take care of. As far as the plating system, the plate system works. Uh, again, sample size of one. So if this this mem plate um, had you know come warped, I'd have been like, oh well, now we're doing this again uh, from another manufacturer. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So at least my sample size of one, plate system was good, the mounting system worked for the 2,000 rounds with the one-hand manipulations and the drop test, I was able to maintain zero, which is kind of my goal. Uh, and overall, I think it's a really good gun. Uh, it has a good size profile. You've got a lot of different options available. Magazines eventually will probably be pretty plentiful and it does have metal mags, which I really do appreciate, especially in polymer guns. I don't like that polymer on polymer if I can avoid it. 
Um, there's really nothing else to say about it. I, I think that some of the the pearl clutching uh, is so far unfounded, but time will tell. We'll see how this gun holds up long term. But right now, after 2,000 rounds, uh, I would, if you're curious about it, just go ahead and grab one. I think it's a good gun. And the footprint, just speaking about the depth of the footprint, is going to put your optic much more in line with natural presentation for those of you coming over from iron sights. And I think that's an excellent thing for people who are dot curious and just getting into red dot guns. This is a good gun that you might want to consider using starting on uh, versus some of the other guns that the shoes that the uh, manufacturers offer are more of an aftermarket or an afterthought. Uh, this gun, a lot of purposeful thought went into the design of this, I think, and that's going to benefit the end user. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.